Yes, you saw it right. You want to know principal square root of 16, that is 4. Principal square root of 25, that is 5. All are correct here. Now, if you want to solve an equation like this, a square is equal to 25, a will be plus or minus 5. Is it? Yes, it is. How you will get this way? Either a will be plus square root of 25. If you write that, you will get plus 5 or a will be equal to minus square root of 25. And in that case, you will get minus 5. You can write this way because when you multiply minus square root of 25 with minus square root of 25, then you will get 25 anyway. So the plus or minus sign, they were before. Under the principal square root, we have 25, you will get 5 only. You will never get minus 5. Proceed further. See here, we have left hand side and right hand side. This is your wish. If you want, you can accept the left hand side. If you want, you can accept the right hand side. In both the cases, you will get plus or minus 5. So if you are doing this way, that's fine. But then if you want to do it right, if you want to do it, why not do it right? So we'll do this way. The only difference is whether the plus or minus sign they're taking birth from under the square root or the plus or minus sign they were before. If you write this way, if you want to come from here to here, why not write this way? Because if x is minus square root of 25, don't you think you write twice and you multiply, then you get x square 25 anyway, then why not accept this? Remember, this is the right way. The right hand side is not the right way. If you want, you can continue writing the same. Now, consider this quadratic equation, the famous quadratic equation. If you see, I've written two formulas. You can accept the left hand side or the right hand side. What you want to accept? I'm sure you must be considering the right hand side just because you have seen it many times. You must have used it many times. So you'll accept the right hand side. But see, if I accept the left hand side, then what will happen? Now, for a while, if I accept the left hand side, let's see what will happen. I've considered one example, x power to minus 10x plus 24 is equal to zero. And I've considered only plus sign here. You see, I'm getting roots two and minus two. So if you consider that, the principal square root of 4 will give you two values 2 and minus 2. Then you will get 6 and 4. You got it. That's fine. So you can use the left hand side formula. And in that case, there is no need to write the right hand side formula. Do you agree with me? Definitely not. Because in the formula, we always use plus or minus sign. The plus or minus sign we see that is there before the principal square root sign. That means you will get only one root. You will not get two roots here. Square root of 4, the principal square root of 4 will not give you plus and minus 2. That is wrong. So you will get only one root 6 here. The other root 4 is not correct. I have written this one once again. If I solve this way, principal square root of 4 will give me only 2. I have plus and minus. Before the square root sign, I will get plus here and minus here and I will get two roots. Remember, a quadratic equation will give you two roots all the time because it's degree two. So you can continue to use the formula. Now, if you want to know the definition of square root of A, that is equal to B, the right hand side is equal to B, then the two conditions must be satisfied. B square must be equal to A. If you square the right side, you must get the left side. Also, B is positive here. See here, if I find square root of 25 using the formula, if I want to find the principal square root of 25 using the formula, I will get 5 because not only 5 square is 25, but also 5 is positive. So this is the definition. If you want to see another definition, you can write square root of x, x square, that is x mod, modulus of x, the absolute value of x. So if you write 25 this way, then it's fine. Anyway, you will get 5. The modulus of 5 is 5. However, if you want to write this way, then also it's fine. But if you apply this formula, you will get modulus of x. That will give you the positive value that is 5. So whatever formula you use, whatever method you use, you will end up getting only 5. You will never get minus 5. Now, suppose you want to draw a graph like this. There are so many online tools. So you can use any online tool to get this graph. Now see, I've written x and y. If x is 0, y is 0. If x is 4, y is 2. If x is 9, y is 3. 
I will never get a minus sign. If I write principal square root of x, it will always give positive. That is why I'm getting the graph. You see, that is above x-axis. I didn't get the graph that is below x-axis. If you want to get that graph as well, you have to define another one. Y is equal to minus square root of x. Here you go on putting the values 0, 4, and 9. And then you will get minus 0, minus 2, minus 3. And then you will get the graph below x-axis. Okay. So combining both the graphs, y is equal to square root of x, y is equal to principal square root of x, and y is equal to minus principal square root of x, you will get y square is equal to x, which is the parabola we know already. Now, to end the class, I have written one equation. I want to solve this equation. I squared both the sides here. Then I took all the terms to the left. Then I factorized it. And I got two, minus two and three. Now we have three choices. You, if you want to accept A, in that case, your answer will be three. Or you accept B, in that case, your answer will be minus two. Or you accept C, in that case, your answer will be two and minus three. Sometimes we do it right, sometimes we do it wrong. No matter how difficult things to grasp, to accept. Let's look deep inside. We have no choice but to find a way to correct it. And only then we'll have complete faith in our skills. Please subscribe to our channel to know and to participate in all of our math concepts. Let me know your answer. This much for today. Thank you for watching. See you next time.